We begin with tonight's big statement. Isang bayan convener, Brother Armin Luistro, confirming over the weekend that Vice President Denny Robredo has supposedly accepted the coalition's nomination to run for president in 2022. He says Robredo may officially file for candidacy on October 5. But Robredo spokesperson Barry Gutierrez denies that a decision has been reached. He once again calls for patience as Robredo is set to make her decision known really soon now that the October 8 deadline nears. Good evening, I'm Gretchen Ho. I'm Robbie Alampay. You're watching The Big Story. It's still guessing game for now, but according to another reliable source, it is now supposedly certain that Vice President Lenny Robredo will throw her name into the 2022 presidential race. The source tells One News that Robredo will be filing her certificate of candidacy on Wednesday. Joe Francisco with The Big Story. For months, Vice President Lenny Robredo has kept her cards close to her chest. Robredo has repeatedly said she's open to running for president while also saying that she prefers to run for a local position. But now, her decision seems to be set. Sources tell One News that Robredo will file her COC on Wednesday to make her candidacy for the presidency official. The decision came after so-called unity talks with other presidential and vice presidential frontrunners broke down over the past week. On Friday, prom the vice presidential bet Lito Atienza told one PHS Wagpo that talks between Robredo and Senator Manny Pacquiao ended in failure. I'm sorry to say that uh, hindi na po progress dahil lahat mm -hmm. na po presidente. Kung may uurong, palagay ko, yung mga talagang dapat uurong, hindi naman yung Meron ng preparasyon. Sources say that talks with other frontrunners have also failed, leaving the Liberal Party with few choices. On Monday, the Inquirer also ran a story on the breakdown of talks between Robredo and reformer candidate Ping Lakson. One choice being floated within LP is Robredo's campaign manager, former Senator Bam Aquino, to run as her VP. But Aquino seems to prefer a Senate comeback, making that proposal still in limbo. Robredo's filing comes just three days before the deadline for the filing of COCs. There is also still no word on other prospective frontrunners, like Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte and former Senator Bongbong Marcos. It's also not clear if Robredo's last-minute decision will blow their derbies into the ring. Jovi Francisco, we are One News. But is this really set in stone? Is the vice president really running for the country's top post? Let's find out from Isambayan convener, Attorney Howard Calleja. Attorney Calleja, welcome po to The Big Story. Uh, good evening, Robbie, and good evening sa inyong televiewers. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Philippines. Ah, sir, pasensya na po. We'll try this once again. Did President, this, has Vice President Lenny Robredo accepted isang bayan's endorsement, nomination of her for president? Uh, Robbie, as of uh, today and as we speak, uh, there has no word of her acceptance. Isang bayan uh, uh, hopes that she will accept, although we would respect whatever decision she will make. And we will wait and patiently wait for her decision uh, when, if and when she will announce her decision. Okay, but patiently waiting seems dissonant to what people have been getting from Isambayan by way of public messages in the past few days. If we, Isambayan is indeed waiting, or for that matter, if Vice President Lenny Reno has in fact made a decision, then why do conveners of Isambayan keep getting quoted in media, apparently speaking, ahead of her? Uh, that was only uh, a quote from uh, Brother Armin, although upon uh, confirming with Brother Armin I and um, reading uh, what he said, I think it is uh, consistent with uh, the same statement as uh, the spokesperson of uh, uh, VP Lenny saying that uh, the decision of uh, VP Lenny may come on or before October 8th. So I think that is uh, consistent that uh, we are waiting on or before October 8th. Okay, now in the meantime, po, your options for completing the slate, particularly at least at the, for the top two slots, uh, 
there have been reports, of course, uh, confirmed by, by many sides of talks ongoing. Uh, are your options uh, for who will run for vice president uh, under your coalition or under your endorsement still open as far as, as, far as you're concerned? Are all options still there? Yeah, all options are still open, and even for the presidency, even if um, uh, there are candidates who have filed the uh, certificate of uh, candidacies for presidency, I think all options are open. If we are look, really looking, sincerely looking for a unity or a coalition ticket, I think uh, those going to the table should always be open to all possibilities. If you are saying... Uh, open lang kami para sa presidente o sa vice presidente o open lang kami for this and that. I think that would uh, be difficult. But if uh, all uh, individuals concerned, all candidates concerned, go to the um, negotiation table or unity table uh, with uh, with open mind, minds, open heart, then I think it is it is possible. And I'm very optimistic, Robbie, that uh, you know it's very it's very possible. A lot of people might say na. And the file na mahirapan, etc. Of course, it's not easy, but I think it is still possible. Okay, marami salamat po attorney Kalieha. That was isang bayan convener attorney Howard Kalieha. If it were true that Vice President Tony Robredo's presidential bid in the 2022 elections is more or less a done deal, then that would leave the ruling party, PDP Laban, as one of the major parties without a standard bearer yet. The party admits it is open to eyeing someone outside the party to run for president. Mean Los Baños with a big story. In a surprising twist, Senator Bongo and not President Duterte filed a certificate of candidacy for vice president under PDP Laban on Saturday. With the filing comes president's announcement he will be retiring from politics. In obedience to the will of the people today, I announce my retirement from politics. PDP Laban Secretary General Attorney Melvin Matibag of the Cusi Camp said Duterte formally withdrew his nomination for VP on September 30. This prompted the party to pass a new resolution to field go for the position. A political science professor says this maneuvering is nothing new. It's already been talked about that... Uh, the Duterte camp will be, you know, pulling in some surprises in the run-up to the filing of the can candidacies. The Kusi faction has yet to officially declare their standard bearer, but pundits say it could be presidential daughter Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte. All over Metro Manila, yung mga campaign headquarters, so they want to present the fact that there's a clamor, public clamor for her to run just like what happened during the time of Duterte, make it appear that uh, you are a reluctant candidate, but, you know, due to public clamor, you, you acceded to the clamor. Duterte himself implied a tandem between his daughter and his aide. But Franco cautions, even if Go has filed his candidacy, should Sara run for president, she might choose a different running mate. We have been informed that the two are not getting along. It's a bit difficult for them to, to, to campaign or to even work together. While not a party member, Matibag admitted that Sara is still an option. Sara's presidential bid means she would have to cancel her COC for Davao City Mayor. Mag-cancel siya ng kanyang COC sa Davao and then mag-file siya ng COC sa Maynila. Someone else will file uh, for a position in Davao, siguro using the same party, hugpong. PDP Laban President Energy Secretary Alfonso Cusi said he already nominated one possible presidential pick who eventually declined. Reporting for News 5, May An Los Baños, We Are One News. These are the other big stories tonight. Here's one presidential aspirant who already sealed his bid. Manila Mayor Isko Moreno files his certificate of candidacy. And backing his run is a growing base of supporters from Mindanao. After she allegedly sought protection from the lower house, formerly Executive Grisel Mago recants her statements over how their firm swindled the government. She says her expose was born out of a pressured response.
And prominent names in government and business were tagged in what has to be the biggest leak yet of offshore financial data. These big stories after the break. Good evening, you're still watching The Big Story. I'm Robbie Alampay. And I'm Gretchen Ho. While a number of names remain uncertain as to their move come 2022, Manila Mayor Isko Mano formalized today his bid for the presidency. If his filing today is any indication, then the mayor might actually be seeing a growing support from Mindanao. Mobile journalist Jacob Lazaro gives us a front seat to the story. Ako po ay tumatakbong Pangulo ng Bansa at aplikante ninyo. On Monday, Moreno filed his Certificate of Candidacy for the Presidency on Direction Democratico with his running mate, Dr. Willie Ong. It's Moreno's second run for a national post. First was his failed senatorial bid in 2016. Aside from presenting himself as a man of the people, the celebrity mayor is also presenting himself as a centrist, seeking an end to the highly polarized politics in the country. I can work with anybody. Ano man, ang katatayuan nila, opposition, administration, uh, ano pang pula yan, dilaw, pula, asul, kahit ano pa sila. Supporters of both Moreno and Ong flocked outside the Sofitel tent. Many are members of the Muslim community. Despite survey numbers showing Moreno having a low poll on voters in Mindanao, Marawi civic leader Samira Gutok says that it's not the case. Ang word is sa Mindanao is pumutok ang pangalan ni Isko. Not to my credit, hindi po ako yon, pero ang dami niyang supporters. Ong is also taking a second stab at a national post, having lost marginally in the 2019 senatorial elections. Huwag niyo kaming paghiwalayin ni Willie. Pagod na kayo ng away. Boboto ng presidente, ibaboboto vice presidente, tapos limang taon, anim na taon, awayan lang ng awayan. In the third quarter Pulse Asia survey, Moreno placed third among preferred presidential bets. Senator Bongbong Marcos was second, and presidential daughter Sara Duterte was first. Marcos and Duterte have been keeping their supporters and opponents guessing. The same goes for Vice President Lenny Robledo who's being pushed by various opposition groups to run. Mobile journalist Jacob Lazaro, we are One News. Here are other updates on day four of the filing of candidacies. Former President and House Speaker Gloria Macapagal Arroyo is seeking a new term as Pampanga representative. That is in spite of GMA announcing her retirement from politics in 2019, supposedly Arlene Rosas. Meaning has filed her certificate of nomination and acceptance as Gabriela Party List representative. Lumad leader Junbert J.B. Gigiyama, Gigayuma, independent, is eyeing a Senate seat in the 2022 polls. And of course, another celebrity is giving Philippine politics a shot. Chef Boy Logro 
is seeking to represent Filipino chefs through Aangat Cusinerong Pinoy Partners. Day 4 also saw 12 presidential hopefuls for a total of 20 so far, 3 vice presidential hopefuls for a total of 7, 16 senatorial hopefuls for a total of 39, and 10 aspiring partners for a total of 48. For the big story in sports, it was an exciting weekend for Pinoy sports fans as several Pinoy athletes made their debut in their respective international leagues. Likewise, several power lifters bagged home medals for the country. More details in my report. Four golds, two silvers, and five bronze medals. It was a strong showing for Team Philippines in the 2021 World Classic Powerlifting Championships in Sweden. The four golds all came from Veronica Ompod. She swept the competition after her opponents failed to make weight in the 43-kilogram women's junior division. World champion. The 74 kilogram sub junior category, while Jane Erasmo took home four bronze medals in the 47 kilogram sub junior category. As for Joyce Reboton, she registered a personal best of 105 kilograms to claim silver in the bench event. She then tallied 187.5 kilograms in the squat and 205 kilograms in the deadlift for a 497.5 kilogram total for the bronze. On Instagram, Joyce thanked those who helped in her fundraising campaign. In women's basketball, it was an impressive debut for Pinay import Jack and Imam. Her clutch performance helped her club team Radnitschki clinch the victory over Pro Leiter 78-77. And Imam finished with an impressive 20 points, 14 rebounds and 2 steals. Over in the Japan B League, it was a Ravenna versus Ravenna showdown over the weekend as Kiefer Ravenna sparked a late rally for the Lake Stars to pick up the win against 30's Neo Phoenix, 93-83 to in the first day matchup. But come their next match, it was 30 and Neo Phoenix's turn to bounce back. Down 18, 30 and the rest of the Neo Phoenix mounted a comeback in the second half to snatch the win 101-96. to We weren't able to do it uh, with one guy, but it was a team effort and that's why this win was very good and very fruitful. Also in the B-League, Kobe Paras had a solid 25-point output in Niigata Albirex BB's loss against Kyoto in their first game. They would later bounce back against Kyoto 77-76. Juan Gomez de Liano, meanwhile, logged more playing time and 10 points, but was unable to help Earth Friends Tokyo Z from going 0-2 in the second division. Gretchen Ho, we are One News. Time for another quick break when we return. In another turn of events over the formerly scandal, Executive Grisel Mago retracts her expose on how the pharmaceuticals swindled the government. Prominent personalities both in government and the private sector have been linked to offshore accounts to keep assets a secret. Good evening, you're still watching The Big Story. I'm Robbie Alampay. I'm Gretchen Ho. In the ever-thickening plot of the formerly scandal, Grisel Mago backtracks her stunning admission on how they had swindled government. She is now claiming that her previous expose was just made due to pressure from the 
chamber. Marian Enriquez with the details. I deny all allegations made by the un unidentified witness who appeared in a video presented by Senator Risa Antiveros on September 24, 2021. The face shields were not expired and substandard. Formerly pharmaceutical executive Grizel Grace Mago just backtracked on her bombshell admission that they had swindled the Duterte administration. Now facing House members, Mago claimed that her expose was but a pressured response. Mago denied tampering with the production date of face shields at the behest of formerly corporate secretary Mohit Targani. She also insisted that the face shields required by the health department were non-medical grade. Um, uh, that time po kasi, talagang under pressure po ako na sumagot kasi ayoko rin naman po maging evasive. After that expose, Mago had been incommunicado, prompting the Senate to seek her alma mater's help, St. Paul University to Gigarao and the National Bureau of Investigation to know her whereabouts. When she resurfaced, she was already under the lower house's protective custody, appearing as its witness. The Senate had initially made the offer to protect her. It was extremely traumatic for me to be accused of lying and threatened with contempt. Senator Richard Gordon hit back at Mago's claims. He said he expected Mago's recanting, noting how she already made a deal with the devil. For Senator Risa Hontiveros, those involved in the family scandal are the ones pressuring Mago. Kung mayroon mang nagpe-pressure sa kanya, yan siguro ay isang napakamakapangyarihang puwersa para lang bawiin ang kanyang mga naunang sinabi sa amin. For Senator Kiko Pangilinan, Mago is a rehearsed witness of the House, which is brimming with Duterte allies. For News 5, Marian Enriquez, we are One News. Filipino politicians and business tycoons were identified in the biggest leak yet of offshore financial data. Mobile journalist Pamela Vasquez with this report. More than 900 individuals and companies linked to the Philippines were caught up in the Pandora Papers. That's according to the Philippine Center for Investigative Journalism in Rappler, which broke the story. Among the public officials implicated were Transport Secretary Arthur Tugade and former Comelec Chief Andy Bautista. According to the report, Secretary Tugade and his children appear as owners of Solart Holdings, a company headquartered in the British Virgin Islands. This offshore entity was not declared in Tugade's Salen as the law mandates. Tugade has yet to respond on the matter. Bautista, who also chaired the Presidential Commission of Good Government in 2010, also appeared as an incorporator in an offshore company. Leaked documents showed Bautista owned Bowman Enterprises in the British Virgin Islands. Bautista also did not declare the offshore firm in Salen. According to the report, Bautista said Bowman was registered to pull his family's investments and that he, quote, does not possess ill-gotten wealth. Conglomerates were also named in the Pandora Papers. These include Kachalians of Valix Group, who said the offshore companies were for, quote, legitimate investment purposes. Second-generation Gatchalians include Senator Sherwin and Valenzuela City Mayor Rex. Other prominent names on the list include the country's wealthiest families, such as the CIS, Aboitises, and Tantocos. Duterte's campaign donor businessman Dennis Uy was also identified in the leaked documents. The Pandora Papers is a massive leak of financial documents that allegedly expose hidden wealth and tax evasion. The project is spearheaded by the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists and involves some 600 reporters around the world. Mobile journalist Pamela Vasquez, We Are One News. Another big story in sports, Team Ribisco has been eliminated from the Asian Women's Club Volleyball Championship after falling to hometown bet Nakon Rachasima. Despite missing a key player, Nakon steamrolled past Ribisco in straight sets in the quarterfinals. The loss relegated Ribisco to the classification round while the hometown squad advances to the semifinals. 
Likewise, Choco Mucho has bowed out of the tournament after their straight set defeat to Supreme Chon Buri in the quarterfinals. The loss brought Choco Mucho down to the battle for sixth place, where they will square off against Team Rebisco. The battle between the two Filipina squads will happen on Wednesday. Inmates from Asorsogon Jail Channel, their inner Madame Inuts, and conduct live selling. Sans the shouting and swearing, of course. The inmates are selling handicrafts they had made throughout their stay, from lanyards to wallets to baskets to lanterns. Never underestimate the inmates as they use high-quality cloth, plastic, bamboo, and abaca. In fact, a Sorsogon jail official said waves of mine came not only from Metro Manila but also from Hawaii, even New York. Proceeds from the online selling will go to the inmates' respective families. City District Jail Facebook Live online selling. Ayan, bago tayo mag-proceed sa ano, susunod natin items. Kanina narinig ko parang medyo nahihirapan yata sila i-benta yung mga produkto. Oh. Kaya it's nice no, na iba't ibang gimmick yung sinasubukan oh. nila. Kaya yung mga miner dyan, yung mga miner dyan, sundan nyo na yung live selling yan. <laughs> it's for a good cause and, and, and really, it's a, it's a wonderful way to do it. Diba, productive sila, malinis ang, ang buhay, nakakainggan yun, nakakatuwa. Kaya pala, ano, over the weekend, yung mami ko parang may pinapakinggang na live feed eh. Mm. Alam ko na kung ano yun. <laughs> And she's watching right now. <laughs> well, that wraps up today's Big Story. Catch us again tomorrow at 8pm on Signal Channels 8 and 2.50. Please like our Facebook page, One News. For more in-depth analysis, visit our webpage, onenews.ph. Mask on. Wash hands. And stay safe, Philippines. I'm Robbie Alampay. And I'm Gretchen Ho. Welcome back, by the way. Maraming salamat. <laughs> We are One News. Have a good evening. Sorry. Hi. Hello, Luchi. Hi, sir.